In this video, we're going to look at how Occam integrates with an existing simulator or tool. And in this example, we're going to be looking at SST. SST is a framework for developing simulators and software in general. So specifically, we're going to look at an example of a simulator we built using SST uh, beforehand, which we've already put into Occam. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in. Uh, if you need to make an account, you can sign up, but we're going to log into my own account here. And this will take us to our uh, dashboard, which says our current uh, projects and work sets. And the work set is basically a set of experiments so that we can keep them all in one place. So we'll create a work set here, XM test here. And you'll see that I already have an XM works work set, but we'll create our own here. And we're going to add that in here. And that's going to create a space to add experiments. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an experiment, which is going to be a kind of executable workspace for us that we can use to uh, produce some result or compose objects together. So we're going to say, eh, let's call it test, something like that. Call it whatever we want, and then we're going to add that. So what it's going to do now is it's going to build out this experiment, and it's going to build out a, a blank workflow for us. There we go. And in this case, what we have is a blank workflow. Now here's where we're going to create our composition of objects and our executable path so to speak. So we'll see a little bit more about what that looks like as we piece it together. But the first thing we have to do is we have to add objects to our workflow, things we want to run. Um, so we'll look at uh, simulators here and you can see that I can, I can select, I can filter the result by software that is a simulator. We have different simulators already in here, uh, DRSM2, Fortuno, some stuff that we've been building, uh, Fred. So we're going to pick XM Demo which is our example for this, this video. And we're just going to click and drag it over, and it puts a little spot in our space here. So this, would, by itself, would just run the simulator, but that's not really good enough. We can see that it takes some inputs here, and it produces some output, some JSON output, and it takes some sort of input program. Because the simulator is going to be an architecture simulator, so it's going to run some sort of, I, I think it's, a, it's sort of a made up architecture and we have example programs for this architecture and basically we want to see how well that architecture performs using our simulator. So it takes programs. So we have this program xsim type and uh, yep. And we have a couple programs here. We're going to pick this xsim program for now. Click and drag it in. And basically what we can do is just wire it up. So here's our uh, first thing here. We have a program connected to our simulator then it produces some output. And what we're going to do now is we're going to we have a little script that we've written beforehand that is going to um, create some plots based on this input. And this script, we, we just know how to use the script. We wrote this script beforehand. We know that we, we need to connect this particular JSON to it, and it's going to uh, give us some graph output, uh, a plot at the end. Uh, all right, so now we have our workflow the way we want it. Let's just save it now. and what we're going to do, we have this program into the simulator, into the script. What we can do now is start to configure what our workflow is going to actually do. Right now, the defaults are being used, but we can actually inspect that. So if we hit this, uh, these gears here, we can go to the configuration panel. And this presents the options for that particular node in the workflow, which is just going to be some sort of software that's already in Occam. So for this particular simulator, we clicked on the, these gears, brought up the configuration tab, and it shows us some configuration options here. There, uh, the frequency of the CPU is an option. There's some memory options here for defining the size of memory on the simulated CPU and the clock frequencies um, and so forth. So that we have a, a backend here, which uh, relates to the SST component that is doing the simulation of memory. We can change that, and we can change the options for the particular component. Uh, for now, we're just going to kind of, let's just change one thing. We'll change the frequency of the CPU, why not? So we can do that and click Update. And this will um, update our workflow. It'll actually have a hidden configuration object that's attached to the simulator that it will change. It'll, it'll add these options to it. And the 4 megahertz will, option will be changed. So we'll update this. And yeah, so now if we looked at these configuration options, we can see that it's now 4 megahertz. Good, good. 
And if we look at the configuration options for the actual plotter, there is some options we can generate. Uh, we can take different types of input. We can generate different types of graphs. We're going to keep these all the defaults. It's going to create a scatter plot um, with these pulling the data out from the JSON based on these uh, these tags. So looks good, looks good. And now what we can do is we can go up here to our our tabs here and we go to run. So this is our experiment, this is our workflow. We'll go to run to actually execute the experiment. Let's press this run button. It'll queue a set of jobs. It'll create a set of virtual machines for each one of these items in our workflow. Um, well, not this one. This one is run as input, so it's going to create a virtual machine for this uh, with this XSIM benchmark resonant on the virtual machine and it's going to run our simulator. Our simulator has a dependency on SST, it has a dependency on Python, those are all going to be based on the description of this object in Occam, those are all going to be put into the virtual machine as well, but you notice in the workflow we don't have to specify that, it knows that natively. So it's going to run this XM demo, it's going to run it with SST, because that's how the simulator itself is constructed, and after it builds this it'll pass along this output to the next item in the workflow which is going to be our script that plots. This is just a Python script that is going to interpret the results of this simulator and generate a new set of results. It's sort of, you can think of this as sort of a filter. So you could do analysis of this step, you can do whatever, uh, but in this case it is just going to simply, okay, see now it's queued up, this turned green, this was done. So this is going to run, it's going to take the output here, reinterpret it, and, and pop out a little bit of JSON that represents a plot, an interactive plot, using one of the widgets we already have in Occam as well. So this will run. Um, it shouldn't take too long to run the script. It's just basically going to, it's creating a virtual machine for this. It's going to just invoke some Python and, and pop out the result. So good to go here. Um, okay, now it's done. So now the workflow is done. We get a check mark here when it's successful. Now we can go over here to output and we see, okay, we have some JSON output, that was the output of our simulator, and we have this plot output. So let's take a look at what this plot looks like. So uh, this is a plotly plot, and you see that it renders because we have a widget attached to this particular object type, but we can also go to files and we can look at the actual JSON if we want. But important here is we go to the details tab, and this is a separate object that can be passed around independently of your experiment but it creates a tag that shows you, I was created by this experiment, I was created by this particular piece of software within that experiment, and I can actually navigate here back to the experiment. I can navigate here and see the workflow. I can see the individual pieces of software here. I can see the versions here. They're all, they're all the way they were originally. All right. And that allows us to have a certain sense of, of lineage and provenance that's attached to every output in the system. This is actually, you know, it's very nice for artifact evaluation and accountability in science to be able to connect these things together, right? Connect the experiment back to the data and back to any of the output that is produced by any of these steps. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you like that uh, demonstration here. Uh, expect a little bit more from different videos. This is just the basic stuff. We're going to look at also how you would create and wrap these experiments in later videos. And yeah, so. If you have any questions, you can contact us at Please Explore. Thank you.